Good morning, everyone. So I will try to do my best, uh, just uh, not to be extremely boring, and I will do it uh, extremely practical. And I am a CEO of the one of the biggest crypto exchanges in uh, Central and Eastern Europe, Zonda Crypto. So we'll discuss a little bit about the Mika today. So it's a very sexy thing for these days, and it's something that all of us would like to know something about. Is it a good solution or bad solution? I cannot answer this question because last time when we met here, there was a panel discussion between us and there was a quite a lot of attendance and most of them, they were very happy with Mika and I was the only one who was saying it's a wishful thinking. So I still think it is a wishful thinking, but it's the best wishful thinking in the world. I will try to explain why. So we've got only 10 minutes, so it's not, a, let's say, a lot of time to discuss so complicated issues as Mika, but you have got here some information how it was delivered. So European Commission is uh, extremely slowly, and uh, it took a long, long time to produce this kind of law, but it's already delivered, so we should be happy, because Europe becomes more and more crypto friendly. Of course, there is a huge amount of disadvantages of this regulation, but still we are, let's say, uh, maybe not a crypto heaven, but the place where something is regulated. I would like to mark something which is extremely different from the other regulations, which is travel rule. Nobody knows how it works. For example, in uh, Estonia, we have got this kind of regulation. We are regulated in Estonia, and we have got a travel rule. So again, wishful thinking. What does it mean? It means that crypto becomes non-anonymous anymore. Because if you want to exchange anything with virtual asset service provider or the crypto exchange, you need to deliver all of your KYC information. So if I'm accepting crypto that you already sent, I must be sure that it's th that's you. From the technological point of view, it's extremely difficult. And that's the wishful thinking. And that shows that the regulators who created the Mika, then ha they have nothing in common with crypto, in my opinion. Because in practice, of course, we've got this kind of rule, but in practice, how can we fulfill the ru those rules all over the world? But according to Mika, we need to focus on it and we need to find a solution. So that's the point that I'm only marking here, but it's quite, quite reasonable. Here, just uh, the package. Of course, we have got 10 minutes, so we cannot focus on all over all of those regulations, but you shall just to find out DLT pilot regime, Mika and Dora. All of them, they are concentrated on the financial stability and there is a few, huge, huge package. So the impact for all the virtual asset service providers is rather concentrated on those three uh, bills, not only on Mika. So that's something I recommend to have a look on. So main objects, why we are here and why Mik what Mika is going to deliver. First of all, legal certainty. It's the most important issue from the uh, practical point of view. We are the virtual asset service provided for, provider from Estonia with a very high level license and we are strictly regulated and we cannot develop business as fast as our competitors all over the world without license. Now it will change. There will be a legal framework all over the Europe that will be equal to the whole European Union. Of course, it's again wishful thinking. Because if you compare regulators from Poland, which are, for example, ex extremely crypto friendly and regulators from Estonia, there will still be crypto friendly. So, in my opinion, not the, um, the, the, the officers in the regulatory uh, office, offices will not change. 
they will still love crypto or, have or hate it. So for sure we will have in European Union the places where crypto will be very friendly accepted and the places where it will be completely unaccepted. And Mika will not change it. But the huge advantage is that we will have the universal uh, rules all over Europe. So of course there is a financial stability. It means that when you as a customer becomes a customer of virtual asset service provider in Europe, you can be sure that this VASP has been checked and regulated by the supervisory, not at, as it happens today. For example, if you compare the licenses from Estonia, uh, Lithuania, Czech Republic, Slovakia, all, all over the, the Europe, they are completely different. And there are completely different uh, necessary documents that you need to fulfill. And uh, there is no universal rule. Mika is going to change it. Uh, of course, the European Commission and European Union was preparing this regulation for a very, very long period. Uh, so it only applies to utility tokens, asset link tokens, and tokens that are electronic money or tokens that are e-money. So these three objects are regulated by Mika. Here is the definition of, uh, of uh, crypto assets. Of course, everyone has a different. Mika has got like this, but it's not so, so important. So what is qu quite important that most of the activities will and services will be regulated by Mika. So even, for example, crypto advisory will be regulated by Mika and you will need to obtain a license which is provided by the by one one of the european union states by uh, the regulatory there is of course like a crypto exchanges um, there is a custody and all their stuff is being regulated by mika so frankly speaking if you have got anything in common with crypto you will be regulated by, by mika and you will need to obtain a license according to mika so what is quite important, there will be a universal European register of the companies which has got the license. Doesn't matter in which, uh, which country, but in one of the members of the state. So you will be able to check if the partner that you are co going to cooperate with is having this kind of uh, license. So. The, the, the companies which are not registered in the European Union will not be able to provide services here. Here you have got, a, uh, let's say, the basic information how the op uh, application should look like and what the applicant uh, should fulfill, what are the rules. Of course, there will be a lot of uh, additional implementation rules uh, in the uh, in the European countries, but there is a universal schedule for the information that need to be provided. So, uh, of course, there is a three months period during which we shall receive the license. In practice, it will be much, much, much longer. For example, we obtained the highest possible license in Estonia and according to the law, it was going to take three months. It took two years. So that is how it works. So it will be the practice. It's again wishful thinking. None of the regulatory will provide you the license in three months. It's not possible. There is, of course, a lot of additional possibilities, admin administrative rules that are providing the possibility to prolong this period till the end of the world. So still, it will be very, very complicated, more and more complicated to get this kind of license. So of course, uh, there is a lot, lot of IT um, requirements that all of the applicants need to fulfill. So at the end of the day, only the big companies with the huge 
uh, amount of money that are able to invest will be able to obtain the MICA license. There is, there is no place for the small start, startups, in my opinion. It brings a lot, a lot of problems to deliver this kind of uh, risk assessment, IT uh, solutions, and all the stuff that MICA requires. So, of course, we will be a crypto heaven, but only for a very big, very, uh, let's say, specialized companies. For me, as a CEO of the, one of the biggest exchanges with one million customers, it's a very good opportunity because we are ready. We already did it. But for startups, it's a completely disaster. You will not be able to fulfill all those rules. So again, it is wishful thinking but it's a little bit of a monopolistic way of create, creating the market. So, of course, there is a, a lot of other uh, things that you need to deliver if that you need to protect the customers. So the customers are the main object of the protection in European Union. So that shows that there is a lot, lot, lot of additional requirements that are, again, wishful thinking, protecting the, the, the customers on the crypto market. Of course, preparation of Mika to, took so long that Mika doesn't cover NFT. Some of people say that NFT is dying, so maybe it's good that European Union didn't, didn't regulate it. DeFi is completely not regulated and central bank digital money, which is a sexy thing now, it's not regulated in Europe anymore so, so far. So another thing that we need to concentrate on when we say that Mika is so perfect solution. It's per perfect solution only in a small part of the market. So what Mika uh, means in practice? We have got some answers and questions here but the, the main answer everyone asks when uh, uh, someone comes and want to have an interview with me they always ask if we will have a Mika will they be a FTX collapse that's the question that I ever heard of course it will be because Mika will not close this kind of cheaters stealers robbers if you prepare the best let's say, regulatory framework, it will not eliminate the people who want to rob you. So Mika is not a perfect solution for everything. It doesn't mean that in Europe we will not have a bankruptcy or whatever. Of course we will have. Of course, these regulations brings a lot of more regulations that concentrate on people, but it will not, uh, let's say, close the market from these kind of people. There is, of course, a lot of challenges I have already mentioned, and most of the challenges I, re I related to the investment in the IT solutions, because all the virtual asset service providers will need to challenge a lot, lot, lot of more rules which are based on the IT uh, development, which is extremely expensive. Of course, uh, what is the main benefit? The main benefit is a un universal legal framework, which means that we will have one regulation all over the Europe implemented that the, by the members of the state. So it's something which is unique and it's something what we need to work on and we need to concentrate on and abroad we can we can present as the as the, the the most important advantage of mika we have got a unique universal regulation not perfect but the one that no one has uh, for us the, at the end of the day is that challenge frankly speaking not we are already prepared for Mika because our Estonian regulation is much, much more strict than the Mika rules. But we know how difficult it is and how much money 
time and concentration of the whole team you need to spend to get the license. In Estonia, there was more than 1,000 licenses. Now, there is only 18 high quality licenses and one of those we possess as the biggest crypto exchange. If someone asks me if I will try to obtain this license once more, I cannot answer yes or no, because it was so difficult that I believe that Mika will be similar one. So I just presented you some advantages and disadvantages. Of course, 10, ten minutes is not a time to have a deeply analyzed, but more or less you know what we shall concentrate on. And if you have any questions, of course I'm here. If you want to, to receive this presentation, of course, I am open to do. Thank you so much, and I wish you a very, very pleasant and fruitful convention. Thank you.